Okay, I got a real quick one for us today. Um, unfortunately, I did look at this one before I brought you with me. Uh, it, I had all my cameras set up, ready to go, and there are storms in the area and a storm blew through. So I put all my equipment back in my truck and sat inside the vehicle and looked at some scan data and played around with it. So unfortunately, I know what's wrong with this vehicle. But I, I wanna walk you through some quick tests on identifying a faulty mass airflow sensor. So there, I spilled the beans on what's wrong with this one. We have a bad mass airflow. Uh, this is a 1997 Ford Explorer. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps that I just did. And it is, it is hot today, guys. I remember this is reminiscent of being in the field. I used to keep a red rag on this shoulder, a clean one, and then a dirty one in my pocket for wiping my hands. This one, that was for wiping my face. So yeah. It is hot here today in Pennsylvania. But uh, let me take you inside. We'll look at some scan data first. All right, guys, first thing I'm going to do is get us on our trouble codes. And uh, we're gonna have a code here that wasn't there before because I disconnected the mass airflow sensor. So uh, the coolant temp too low for closed loop, that code was there. Uh, we have to ignore this P0102. That was not there. Everything else, I believe, was. Let me just look here. Yeah, rich exhaust, 172 and 175. Our O2 faults, 1132, 1152. Slow response. Yeah, all of that was there. Then throttle position inconsistent with mass airflow was there. And our coolant sensor code. Yep. All right, so the only one we're ignoring is that one. So I looked at that, eyeballed, you know, of course, coolant temperature, that's on my mind. Worried about, um, you know, this thing running rich as we have rich exhaust codes. And by the way, when I started this, there was a big cloud of black smoke. So I know it's running rich. It hardly revs at all. Here, I'll let you listen to it now. Listen to this engine. <laughs> so it really won't even stay running. Here, I'll try to rev it. That's wide open throttle right there. <laughs> There's clouds of black smoke. Hold on. Do that one more time. I changed our camera angle there. <laughs> That's pedal to the floor. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd think plug exhaust initially. In fact, what, what you guys missed off camera is I, uh, I went under the hood right away. Let's see if I got you guys in the shot here. And some of this, we're just gonna move through quickly, but uh, uh, underneath I have a, um, a DPFE sensor over here on this side of the engine. And uh, that DPFE is a pressure sensor for the EGR system. And I did a real quick back pressure check and that needle was flopping all over the place, but you heard the way it's running. And when I got it to run a little bit smooth, I had you know, less than one PSI of back pressure. So plugged exhaust was not it. And then I focused immediately on the mass airflow. Let me show you the data PIDs for this. I'm a little bit upset again that I didn't film live, but I didn't have a choice. It was dumping rain on me. Um, this Barrow frequency was reading 131 hertz and, uh, or 100, what was it? Maybe, it, I'm sorry, not 131. It was 160 hertz and my Barrow inches of mercury was uh, 31. And that's the highest I had ever seen on, on a Ford. So um, a little bit of background on the Barrow stuff on Fords these are generated signals off of the mass airflow sensor. So they were much, much higher than normal. And uh, for those of you that want more information on these frequency numbers on Fords, you can refer to my section eight material in my ebook and my classroom lectures on Scanner Danner Premium. And I, I go through a lot of info on that. Moving on, um, what we want to focus on for this mass airflow is the grams per second and then the mass airflow voltage all right so these are my key on engine off readings again focused on the top two mass airflow voltage and grams per second 
And I gotta give it a little bit of gas to keep it running. And I'm not giving it much. It's a very, very little bit of, of, of throttle movement. Um, and I'll tell you guys right away, look at my grams per second. So some numbers that we use that um, I've been testing and I'm getting more and more comfortable with them as far as grams per second. That's A lot of that is from help from you guys. I've gotten some good feedback on using the grams per second based off of the liter of the engine. So this being a four liter engine, we should have roughly four grams per second at idle on this. Look at my grams per second. It's 17 grams per second and a 1.7 volt signal. That's very, very high for, for a Ford at idle. Um, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, I, I know for sure that the voltage number should be less than a volt at idle. It's actually a little bit better than what it's been. I'm just kind of easing off the throttle here, trying to let it idle on its own. It will not. All right, so our numbers are way too high. And I'll let you guys look at the fuel trim numbers here too. Just so you get an idea of how, how the car is running. Right now we're adding fuel on the short term. O2s are pegged rich. There's my bank one. Here, let's ungraph the math. There's my, sorry, bank two and bank one O2s. You see they're rich. And can we look at the short term at the same time? I wanna eyeball this number here. I don't know why we're adding fuel here. The memory is adding fuel, or that's not the memory, that's like right now. I can't, can't even keep this running at all. It's kind of crazy that that fuel trim is not countering that. Just seeing what kind of mode we're operating in. open loop drive, there's black smoke dumping out of the tailpipe. Look, the fuel trim numbers are irrelevant right now um, with this open loop fault that's going on here. Um, let me just show you guys how this thing runs just by unplugging the mass airflow. Just doing a simple reach down and unplug it test on the math. It is unplugged. Listen to how it runs now. Keeping in mind, the plugs are all, all uh, fuel fouled in black. Sometimes with these, when you unplug a mass airflow, you need to turn the key off and back on to uh, get it to go into a default mode. We've got a nice exhaust leak. Um, I believe this exhaust is a little bit restricted too. I think I'll show you guys the back pressure reading that I had. I'm a little bit concerned about one PSI. I know the spec I use that I've given to you guys many times is no more than two PSI at 3000 RPM, but I have to tell you on a good system, there shouldn't be any. Uh, so I'll show you guys that. Much better numbers. These are default numbers now. Look at my grams per second default. Let me get rid of my trims, O2s or, or are irrelevant as well at the moment. Check out the default grams per second reading is 2.37 with it unplugged. Um, I don't know how accurate the uh, four grams per second number is I gave you guys for a four liter engine. I think I'm saying that right. I think I'm saying that right. Or was it half of what the liter was? I don't know, you guys can help me out with that. Um, but look at the default, 2.37 is my default idle number and when I rev it it doesn't change on this one some of them will actually change the grams per second reading even though the mass airflow voltage signal is dead this one over here to the right you'll see that number moving up and down as a substituted value and man that can throw you for a loop if you weren't aware of that uh, it's still not running perfect 
Uh, it has a little bit of a lope to it, and I believe, again, because of how rich this thing was running, that those plugs are fouled out pretty bad. If I hold this up for a little bit, getting a lot of smoke out of the tailpipe on those revs just kind of blowing off what's in there much much better isn't it all right so let's talk about this default strategy here wait before I forget the code we had was throttle position right we had a throttle position correlation code to the mass airflow sensor. Well, keep in mind the mass airflow before was reading 18 grams per second at idle with the throttle closed. And so the computer compares the two and knows that there's a discrepancy there. That's what that code was. My ECT code was actually from a stuck open thermostat. So you see, I've been running this car for a while and I've only hit 172 degrees. That is not good clearly a stuck open stat so he needs a thermostat to fix that as far as the o2s go i'm not worried about him doing anything with those right now i think the main thing with the o2s is let's get this mixture right and uh these things will clean themselves up when you unplug a mass airflow it will run slightly richer than normal which you're really seeing off the o2s here uh, but if i snap it limiter I should be able to drive these lean Man, these data pids are really slow updating if I hit that rev limiter use the injection cut you see my bank one responded to that uh, let me do a custom <clears throat> just want to look at my upstream o2s for a second just want to make sure that they are actually functional oh yeah that's better my diesel fuel cut not de sorry my injection cut that rev limiter cuts the injection pulse watch it again see it dropped it lean there all right so I'm not worried about the O2s, they look good. I think once we fix this mass airflow issue, we will be able to uh, take care of all the codes on this. We had a slow response code too. Again, O2 related. Um, see my barrow numbers have come down. Uh, let's see what else do I need to show you. That back pressure test and then maybe, I guess some final voltage measurements on the mass airflow sensor. It's really not necessary in this case. <clears throat> A faulty wiring for the mass airflow is not going to make it read a higher than normal number um, but we'll check them anyway it's real quick to do you hear the idle kind of rolling up and down a little bit that's these default strategies they're not perfect but they work pretty well and keep in mind that not all cars have them you unplug a mass airflow on some cars it'll run just as bad as it was with the faulty mass airflow so don't rely on this test totally but it's real good for GM's and Ford's for sure okay back pressure test nice and easy on Ford's with DPFE sensors unplug either one I choose the smaller one in this case because uh, it fits my vacuum gauge better so there's a smaller hose and a larger hose and the uh, they're both connected to the exhaust and then my pressure scale as you're seeing that there's my pressure scale the top numbers on this side right here and I want to hold the rpm up if I can any misfire is going to make that needle jump you see we have a little bit of a miss going on here
PSI number. I don't know. I think if it's my car, I don't think I'm gonna worry about it. Um, little engine tick there. But something to make Pete aware of is, you know, how long has this thing been running this rich? You know, have we poisoned one of the cats or the only cat that's on here? I'm not sure how many. And the answer is possibly we've done a little bit of uh, damage. But again, just notating that. Final checks, powers, grounds, signal on the math. As far as my scope connections, I'm going over here with the batteries kind of out of the shot, I think, yeah. My ground lead's going to battery negative. And my positive lead for my, for my scope is going right to my mass airflow. Now when I plug this in, it's gonna probably start to run pretty bad again. And I may have to do some of these checks key on engine off. But I just plugged the mass airflow back in. Uh, the computer is probably still using the default mode. So that's a good thing for me right now to keep the car running. Hitting my home tab, going to my scope multimeter. For those of you not familiar with the Snap-on tools, they offer guided component help. I don't need that in this case. I know what I'm dealing with. I'm going right to my graphing meter. Volts DC. And I'll say this again, for those of you that want more training on this mass airflow and how it operates, I have a ton of lectures available on Scanner Dan or Premium. And I have this information in my book. This would be section 12 for you guys that are following along. Uh, this has two grounds one feed and one signal. So we'll go after the feed first. We should have 12 volts on this wire. As you can see, I have 13.8 volts. That is good. System voltage, that is the red wire. Um, this is now, I believe, a black wire. This should be a ground. I have 0 0.08 on that ground. 0.1 or less is acceptable. And uh, this should be the other ground is 0 0.08. It's kind of neat the way Ford does these grounds. The computer circuit for the mass airflow actually grounds through the sensor and then the sensor grounds to the block. So it's a interesting way they do it. And this is my signal wire right here. The uh, blue with the red tracer. Sorry, my hand's in the way. You can't see this very well. I'm just back probing this connector. Reading 143, 155, and I'll hit the home tab. We'll compare that to scan data. My scan data for my mass airflow. It's going to be different right now because we are still in default mode, I believe. Or no, we're running. 135, 134, it's better than what it was. 141, home, oops, home, scope multimeter, 144, 143. So that's good. Uh, comparison between scope and scan tool. It's reading accurately. Definitely a faulty mass airflow. If I can beat on it and make it act up more. No. All right, cool. Well, that's it. Faulty math. On a 1997 Ford Explorer.